Wake up. It's the morning motivation with Brittany Daniel. Good morning. 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 I hope you guys are doing well out there. It is July 28th, and I'm super excited to come to you guys today and talk to you. If this is your first time, do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up. For those of you who are listening on my podcast, go ahead and make sure you leave a review, download the podcast. And if you are joining me on TikTok, then head over to my YouTube channel so you can comment live. I hope that you guys are doing well. Over here, I have my morning motivation cup, which is coming soon. Mm. I have a great update. So the book giveaways are coming back next week. Site is about 90% complete. So I'm super, super, super excited to bring you guys all of show you guys all the goodies and everything that I've been working on. So hang tight. It is coming. Super excited about that. But we're going to go ahead and do our uh, shout outs and our prayer. And then we'll jump into the topic, which is you can achieve. Oh, excuse me. Life is a reflection of your state of mind. Life is a reflection of your state of mind is what we're going to get into today. So go ahead and say our morning prayer. <clears throat> then I'm going to go ahead and give the shout outs and let's go. So if you are not spiritual or religious, or if you do not subscribe as a follower of Christ, it is totally okay. You are still welcome here. Everybody is welcome. We do not discriminate here on Morning Motivation. I hope that you will stick around, and I hope that it's okay that I pray for you anyway, okay? All right, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for waking us up again for another day. Thank you for allowing us to connect through the internet and grow this really dope, really positive collective of beings, like-minded beings. Thank you for opportunities that we have yet to grasp and the things that you're going to reveal to for us today. Um, I ask that we continue to do the things that are pleasing in your sight. Your darling son, Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, well, let's jump into the shout outs. If you are watching on TikTok, head over to YouTube and be a part of the community. You guys do not forget to give the video a thumbs up. You're watching it on your TV. I need you guys to get your phones out and go ahead and click that like button for me. <laughs> and it's foggy because it's um, cold, by the way. All right. Well, good morning, Destiny. Good morning, Jeanette. Happy Thursday. Good morning, Ashley Rich Rising. <laughs> uh, good morning, Queen. Good morning, Brandy. Good morning, Shanice. Good morning, Wendy. Good morning, Aisha. How are you? Grand Rising, Kiki. Good morning, Felicia. Good morning, She Amber. Good morning, Shanta. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while. How you doing, girl? Hey, Charmaine. Good morning. Good morning, Cozy Queen. Good morning, Turquoise. Good morning, Royalty. Charmaine says, life is a reflection of your state of mind. Absolutely. Grand Rising, KK. Good morning, Jessica. Now, on my break, well, first of all, hope you guys are doing well. Um, if you guys have any topics or anything that you guys want me to talk about today, go ahead and leave them in the comments. It is always an open discussion. However, I do have something uh, I do want to talk to you guys about, something that has changed my mind. Hey, dang Dion. Hey, Jessica. <laughs> my girls are showing up. I hope you guys are doing well. So on my break, I started watching a fellow YouTuber named by the name of TK. And I really, really enjoy her content. She has a podcast and a, a vlog channel and all of that. But one of the things that she's been saying lately that has been sticking out like a sore thumb for me, and I was like, I have to share that with my morning motivators. So shout out to TK. Hopefully I can uh, interview her one day. I think she's super, super, super dope. Um, but what TK says is life is a reflection of your state of mind. Well, she didn't say that part. That was me. But life is a reflection of your state of mind is a topic we're going to be talking about. And this is her. This is what she says she got from her dad. She doesn't know where the quote is from. But I thought that this was extremely important. I wanted to share with you guys. If you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you like to win, but don't think you can, it's almost a cinch that you won't. And this really, really, really hit hard for me um, because it really, it really expresses how our mindsets are super, super powerful. You guys, our mind is so powerful. It can heal itself. Like our thoughts can heal our bodies. Our thoughts can make us sick. Our thoughts can make, uh, okay, let's just go back real quick. For those of you who don't know how powerful your mind is, I'm going to tell you guys a story. When I was young, I used to hate, when I say hate with the, with 
from the soles of my feet to the top of my head. I used to hate going to um, this place called Kumon. <laughs> if anybody remembers Kumon, if anybody remembers Kumon, right? Um, it is like, I don't know if they still have it. I don't, I don't recommend it. I hated it as a kid, but Kumon was like this Asian based, um, what is it called? Freaking like a, a tutoring center or something like that. Because my grandmother was like, Hey, she needs help in her reading and math really because I missed a lot of school. That was the first thing, but needed help in my reading and math as a kid. And so she thought that this program was going to be beneficial. Now, what I found out about myself later on in life is that I was not good at times test. Times tests were just not my judge. Didn't recommend. Highly, highly hated it, right? It just I hated times test. And Kumon was all about timing. They wanted you to do things very quickly. They wanted you to do addition quickly, multiplication, all of the all of the things they wanted you to do timed. I'm dyslexic. Didn't know that until I got became an adult. Times test wasn't good for me. So I ended I utterly hated this place. Like hated it from the bottom of my heart. And um <clears throat> What I would, what happened was anytime I would go, I didn't want to go so bad that by the time we pulled up to the door, I was literally sick, like literally physically, like I was going to throw up. I wasn't making it up. I would just literally just feel like I was going to be nauseous and absolutely hated the place. As soon as we would leave, I instantly felt better, instantly felt better. Now think about the times in your childhood or in your adulthood, maybe it was a person. Maybe you were fine and a person came around and you just immediately just got sick or maybe it was a situation. Maybe it was talking to a significant other, a lot of our anxiety, depression, and all of that has started in the mind. It could be chemically imbalanced, but um, sometimes it can be also just how we think about things and how we see things. And that's why therapy is so great because what a therapist does is they hear what we say, right? We hear, oh, I'm scared of X, Y, and Z. Then they go to the root. Well, where did this start? Where does this come from? And then they help you change your thinking around said issue or problem. That's why it's very important as an adult to be open-minded and not get stuck in your ways and say, this is who I am. This is what I think. This is because... When you do that, you close your mind off onto so many other opportunities and possibilities, but that's what therapy does. So going back to how powerful your mind is, my mind was so powerful in that moment that it would literally make me sick. I was watching, I forgot what documentary it was, but it was saying how your mind is so powerful, it can literally heal itself. That's why they say, watch what you say and mind your words, right? Uh, we have a running joke in the house all the time that we talk about how old we are. And I really want to stop that because they say that when you tell yourself, when you verbally tell yourself and it mentally goes into your subconscious, like it programs into your subconscious, whatever it is, either I'm stupid, I'm old, beautiful, I'm, I'm the bomb, whatever the narrative that you constantly tell yourself is going to seep in your subconscious and it starts altering your DNA. Believe it or not, it is that is this is very true. All my nurses and medical people, let them know in the comments. But your mind is so powerful that over time you can either morph your life into something spectacular, or you can morph your life into something that's not that great. Like if you constantly think negative, if you constantly um think about being sick or something negative happening to you, you will be surprised of how just innately and energetically your cells start to change and turn over, which is really, really, really interesting. So going back to the quote, um, if you think you're beaten, you are. So if you're going to start a project, if you are going to start a, a YouTube channel, right? And in your mind, you're already like, well, nobody's going to watch me anyway. Are you going to put your best foot forward to make the best video that you can? Are you going to enjoy the process? Are you going to dread it the whole time? Because you already think that you've lost. Anytime an athlete goes into a game, they say they have to be in a peak state of mind because if they don't believe they can win, if they give up, if you mentally give up, you, you won't win. It was funny because um, I'm in the military, for those of you who don't know, and we used to have our 
PT test. And during the PT test, we used to have to you run this two mile run, push up, sit ups, two mile run, right? When I say I hate running, I absolutely hate it. But I need to stop saying that because if I say I hate running, I'm never going to enjoy it and like it and want to do it. You can really fool yourself by giving yourself what we call a false motivation by just telling yourself that you like something and quote unquote faking it until you make it, right? That's to me more faking it till you make it than lying about who you are, buying stuff that you don't need, right? (laughs) But you can literally beat yourself before you've gotten started. So on this PT test, we used to run this two mile run. Even if I prepared or if I didn't prepare, a little thought would come and creep up in the back of my mind and say, you can't do this. I'd have to immediately shut it down and just start praying. And the prayer that got me through every PT test was, I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me. If I didn't, if I didn't think of nothing else, I could do anything through Christ who strengthens me. I could do any, and I would just repeat it over and over and over and over and over and over again. And I always passed, right? But if I would tell myself during the test, you can't do it, you're not gonna make it, I would end up innately slowing down. I would end up innately just not doing well. So when you go through to anything, whether it's a new challenge, whether it's a new business, whether it's a new relationship, whatever the case may be, whether you're starting school or a new chapter or another semester, if you believe you're beaten, you've already lost. So we have to, even if it's lying to yourself, y'all, it, whatever it is that you have to do to keep yourself in, a, in the most positive mindset possible is going to help you conquer the day, conquer whatever is in front of you. I talked about this on Monday, but it was mainly um, don't wake up with the sense of, oh, I got to do this today. Like, oh, I got to go to work. Oh, I got to take care of these kids. You know, instead of doing that, even if that's how you feel, pause, take some deep breaths and change your mindset. Okay, today I get to do these things. You know, there one day I remember praying for this job, even if you don't like it and you want to change jobs, change your mindset. I used to pray for this job. So, and then start finding the little things. We talked about this yesterday, romanticizing your life. Find the little things that you can look forward to. All right, today I'm going to go to work and I get to go to the Keurig, free coffee. They got snacks. It's Wednesday or Thursday. They got snacks in the break room today. That's when they re up. Whatever you have to do, to just focus on the positive and boost yourself up. Even if it's your like favorite coworker, your work bestie, right? Your work bestie's at work. Um, all right, today Michelle's gonna be on shift. So me and her have a good time. Whatever the little things are, and you'll be surprised as soon as you start focusing your mind on what you can change, what you do have control of, and the and romanticizing the little things and pumping yourself up, your entire mood can shift. You know, if you feel that you're not beautiful. By looking yourself in the mirror and telling yourself you're beautiful, smiling at yourself, literally this sounds crazy, but giving yourself a high five, hyping yourself up is imperative. It changes your mindset. It changes how you see yourself. It changes how you feel about yourself. And we always talk about becoming our own best friend. This is how you you get in that mindset of you got this, you can do this. Have y'all seen um, Insecure? <laughs> Insecure is one of my shows. Hey, y'all, join us on YouTube if you want to be a part of the conversation. But Insecure was one of my shows. So happy, so sad it's ended. Um, but Issa used to go in the mirror and talk to herself. Now, some of the stuff she used to say wasn't all the time, wasn't all the time on point. You know, sometimes she didn't always hype herself up. But that is an exercise that you can truly do for yourself to put yourself in a better state of mind. People do it before they go into interviews. People do it before they negotiate contracts, before they go on dates. Like you have to be your number one fan. You have to hype yourself up when nobody else will, because it's not anybody else's job to. And that's the thing. Like when we are so hell bent on people not showing up for us, it's not their job to, if they do it great, right? If they do it great, but we have to be so solid with ourselves, our mentality, what we want and what we believe in a positive light that we go after the things that we truly want and truly um, and truly just want for ourselves. Yes, royalty says facts. As a man thinketh, so is he. And we say that all the time here on Morning Motivation. Definitely, definitely, definitely. If a man thinketh, so is he. So if you 
If you think you're beaten, you already are. Okay. If you think you're beaten, you already are. Charmaine says, man, check it. <laughs> man, heck yeah. <laughs> Those thoughts just made me call in last week. I woke up throwing up from being so sick from a breakup. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you're going through this, Charmaine. I wish you would have been here for our heartbreak episode. But I want to give you some nuggets if you're still going through it. If it was meant to be, it will be. And I know that sounds so cliche. I know that that's not what you want to hear possibly when you're going through a breakup. <clears throat> but anybody who came into your life for a reason and exited your life is for your betterment and your purpose. There is going to be somebody and something better on the horizon. Every time a door closes, another one opens. And it may not be your season to find that person. It may take a little time, but they're just moving out of the way in order for you to get what you truly need and truly desire. So do not hit, don't, don't spend too much time in that energy. Allow yourself to go through the motions. I do have a heartbreak episode. You got to go back down and, and look for it. Um, but don't waste too much time in that space, you know. Remember all the good times, give it, give it the peace and try to move on mentally as soon as possible. Because if we stay in that state, <clears throat> what ends up happening is sometimes we don't heal until months and years later and life is way too short, but I hope everything is okay. I hope you're okay. Prayers out to you. Heartbreaks suck. Give yourself time, but don't dwell in that space too long, too long, because it can really take over you if we don't get a hold of our emotions and our mental state. And we can do it. Our minds are very, very powerful, but we have to take control of our minds and not let our minds control us. Control us. Brandy says the mind is so powerful. Yes, thank you. Uh, May the realtor says, hey, May, good morning. I barely got service at my job. Oh, I'm sorry, May. I'm so sorry. But she, Amber, it, a part of our morning motivation staff goes that she uploads the podcast to pod me, uh, to our podcast site. So it is on Spotify and Apple Music. If you guys can never get like service to watch live and to chime in live, then you guys can definitely go back and listen to it there. Make sure you download. It is on the website, BrittanyTheHost.com uh, as well. KK said, this came right on time. I am, I am so negative and I tried, I'm tired of being that way, looking forward to change. And you absolutely can, KK. Like you so, sometimes that's what it takes. Don't be too hard on yourself in those moments because sometimes it takes us getting over ourselves and being over it. Like I'm tired of feeling this way. I'm tired of thinking this way. I'm tired of being in this state. That's okay. That's a, actually a great sign because that's going to give you the momentum and the jilt that you need to change. So when you're going through life and you keep hitting these walls or you keep coming up against these, these feelings of like, oh, I'm over this relationships, jobs, Heck, parenting, maybe you need to go send them off for two weeks somewhere else, you know, um, just life, just whatever it is, that is an indication that you need a change. And that is such a beautiful place to be in. It doesn't feel beautiful at the moment. It feels, it's sucky. It sucks. It's like, why? I'm just over it, right? But it's such a beautiful place because that's where you get to rework and figure out what I need. Do I need to change my mindset? Do I need to change my diet? Do I need space for my partner? Do I need space for my kids? Do I need, what, it, what is it that I need in order to get me back to a good place? That's how I felt for a little bit of being on live for a little bit. I was just like, oh, I, I can't shake this feeling. So I immediately did something to change my mindset. So it's such a beautiful place to be in. So don't be too hard on yourself, but know that you have the power to change. Good morning, Ross. Hello. Oh, we missed you too. You guys, if you are on uh, Insta uh, TikTok Live, go ahead and go over to our in YouTube channel and come and join the conversation. I love that you guys are, are over there, but come join the conversation here on YouTube or you can sit and watch and listen. Totally okay. Uh, Shanta says, yes, bills, food, gas. I need a positive outlook on things. I am financially stressed so I can, tr so I train my mind uh, not to get stressed out. Yes. So in the midst of this, like these inflations, right? Even when things are way more expensive than they used to be, which I found a hack. 
Amazon, if you go on Amazon and go on Prime Food or Amazon Food or whatever the delivery services for food, prices are pretty normal on there, like back before the inflation. So if you need a little hack and little tip to save a little coin on groceries, I'm not a big fan of grocery delivery because who knows what they're going to pick out. But Amazon does have a food delivery service where prices are really, I'm like, oh, these are old prices. <laughs> these is the prices before the inflation. So there's a, there's a hack and tip for you. Couponing is always good to save a little money as well. But also being in a mindset of gratitude, even if this is what this isn't what we want, right? You know what? Thank God it's more expensive, but thank God I have it. Or now I'm being forced to being very particular about my budget. So thank God for that. You know, sometimes the hardest things bring out the biggest blessings in us. The hardest things bring out the biggest blessings. So try to find the silver lining and it can be annoying in the military call it hunting the good stuff. It can be annoying because sometimes you don't want to hunt the good stuff. Sometimes you just want to be in your mood. Give yourself 24 hours. If, if, if not shorter than that, get out of that mood and try to hunt the good stuff. Okay. You're human. You're going to have your, your time. You're going to have your days. You're going to have your, your moments. All of that is okay. But what we got to do is try our best as soon as possible to switch our mindset. Because your mindset is what's keeping you sad. The mindset is what keeps you stressed. The mindset is what keeps you, you know. But then be realistic if there are some things that are going on that you need to remove physically. Because there are physical stressors too. Good morning, Dia Dia. Good morning, Melon and Honey. Brandy says, I definitely need help with having more positive outlook. I have a hard time with overthinking things, just thinking the worst. One thing that helped me with this, Brandy, is telling myself that the worst case scenario nine times out of 10 ain't going to happen. That's the first thing. When you go down the rabbit hole, my Virgo brain does this. I can go from a situation to the worst case scenario in 2.5 seconds. It's really my superpower. And I would say this is your superpower. So anybody that's like that, that can see the holes in the negatives in things, think about doing uh, work in law. Also, um, what is it called? There's actual jobs where this superpower is needed. Um, there's another job that's like this too. It helps, it helps businesses not lose money and can see the holes. And please leave it below if somebody knows. It's not project management. It's like risk assessments or something like that. That's actual job. So we just have to funnel this superpower that you have of seeing the worst case scenario into something positive that's going to either make you money or that's going to benefit you. And if it's not going to do that, then we have to focus our minds on the positive as much as possible. So when you go Okay, what's the worst case scenario that can happen, right? Then you immediately go, um, okay, that may never happen. Now, what's the best case scenario? Because your mind's going to go there. It's already programmed nine times out of 10, and it's been like that for a while, right? So we're not trying to fight our brains. We're trying to reprogram them. So when you go to, when you go to the negative thought, worst case scenario, right? Boom. Okay. This is the worst case scenario. You tell yourself nine times out of 10, it's not going to happen. Then you say, well, what's the best case scenario? I already know the worst. What's the best? And then you start hanging around in the best case area. <laughs> it's like going to a bookstore in your mind, right? You can go to the nonfiction section. You can go to the horror section. You can go to the Christian section. You can go to the fiction section. You can go to the fantasy section. You can go stay in the calendars. So when our brains, our, our brain of a library or whatever it's called, or let's say the Barnes and Noble of our brains, we have to pick which section we're going to hang out in. We can hang out in the horror and the negative and the, and the woe it's me's and the, and the bad part of the, of the brain. Or we can change our thoughts and say, you know what? I want something different. I want to try something different. I want to read something different. I'm going to go to the self-help, <laughs> the self-help section of the library of the mind the positive mind. And you can hang out there. You don't have to stay in the negative. And knowing that about yourself is so beautiful because you have the opportunity to change it. You have the opportunity to change it. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. What's the name? 
But yes, uh, going in any sector of law, law is a very good, if you ever wanted to be a lawyer and you can see the worst case scenario, that is actually a really good place to go to. Um, there's, a, I've, I've, please somebody help me. I forget what the job is called, but there is a job where you look for the worst case scenarios in companies and contracts. Those jobs are out there. So you can use that as your superpower. Just know when to turn it on and turn it off. Don't, don't, don't use that as your, as your neutral place where you just go automatically. Hey, Cookie Monster was laid off from my job almost three weeks ago, interviewing a lot, not discouraged yet. <laughs> and it's okay. Don't be discouraged. All that was doing was moving you out of that situation. Now, let me ask you a question, Cook, uh, Cookie Monster, not to get in your business or not to be uh, a negative Nancy, but did you see signs prior to, like, did you hear chatter around the office? Did you know, like, hey, they're starting to cut people back? And the reason why I asked this is because you want to get ahead of the curve, not Cookie Monster, but anybody else. When you start hearing all, hearing about layoffs in the office, when you start hearing about the company is cutting back, especially if you were a new hire, it might be time to go re-up on some job skills, go get a resume together, go look just in case. So if you start seeing signs in the office that something's going on, because there's a lot of jobs out there, y'all. Don't let Pete, don't let this whole recession thing scare you or fool you. There are a lot of jobs out there, depending on your job field in your sector. A lot of companies are hiring. So the good news is with you being laid off is you're probably going to get a better job with better pay. Just make sure you negotiate it. Always go up. Anytime you get a new job, <clears throat> let it be a stepping stone or a step stone in a new direction. And sometimes God has those things happen to us so we can move and be in a better state and be in a better, in a better place. But you got it. Oh, Shamber, you're so sweet. That's why I love my community. That's why you guys have to come to the YouTube channel because we encourage each other. Everybody's giving Cookie Monster some shout outs. <clears throat> okay, I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> what up, Detroit? <laughs> yes, you will get the job. You will get a new job. It's going to be even better. Going to be even better. Just know you can get that resume updated, interview like you had all the skills. And you don't have to tell them that you got laid off. What makes you, when people ask you, well, what's making you leave your, your prior job or you want to change? Well, you know, I've been doing this for a very long time and I want another challenge. You ain't got to tell them nothing. Y'all better play the game. We had a whole, we had a whole conversation about playing the game before the break. Y'all better play the game. Y'all better play the game. Okay. Cindy says, I have a workaholic history that causes me to burn. It caused me to burn out last year. Now that I am back and popping out. I have truly, I, I'm having to truly work with mind, with my mind to fight those old workaholic tendencies, which is hard for me. Sydney, I'm not a therapist, so take this with a grain of salt, but this is for anybody. What are you trying to fill up? I think when people are workaholics, they're trying to, and not Sydney, because I can't diagnose anybody. I'm not a therapist. But when people tend to overwork, they're trying to compensate for something. Either you need it for approval, either you like the sense of achievement. Um, and sometimes it's because we don't have enough life going on outside of work because we're like, okay, I'm bored or I have something to prove. You know, sometimes people can overwork. Um, but pick some hobbies, pick some hobbies. I was telling you guys, I love Taylor King now. It's one of my favorite YouTubers to watch. She loves to play tennis. She loves to go golfing because she did it growing up. What are the things that you can really get yourself into? What other hobbies, activities, charitable drives and things that you can get? Because remember yesterday we talked about that work-life balance. <clears throat> and I'm so happy that this younger generation is really bringing it to the forefront that we do not have to work hard and burn ourselves out. That's actually less productive. It gives you less of what you want versus more so than what you want. So really think about that. Or is it something that you're trying to fill a void for. I remember there was one part of my life where I was working a whole lot because I didn't have a family. I didn't have uh, children. So I was just like, well, why not work myself to the bone? And I burnt myself out. So instead of looking at it like that, of what you don't have, what else could you fill your life up that brings you joy, that makes you happy, that, that you strive for, and that you look forward to every day? I think that that's super helpful. Y'all, we got to get us some hobbies. I know that we grinding. We are here trying to live our best lives and make all this money. 
but hobbies are crucial. And if your hobby turned into your job, every passion doesn't need to be a hobby. You got to find something that just brings you joy just because like I love coloring. I, I think I talked to you guys about that. I'm grown and I have crayons and a coloring book because something about doing it really just makes me happy. It just brings joy. Hobbies are strongly important. Absolutely. You have to find things that just bring you joy just because everything does not need to be um, a pat like with money attached to it. And if you can, that's great. Like I know somebody from college. I don't know if you guys know her or have seen her on the internet, but she's blowing up. My girl is doing great. This young lady I went to college with named Ashley Iman. She, uh, she was so out of the box. She used to be like this rock star girl in college at an HBCU was singing, very talented, always stood out beautiful. And, um, a couple, like, I want to say a year or two ago, she started skate. Like she was a, she's a bomb skater. I didn't know she skated in school, but she started skating on the internet, making, you know, skating videos like roller, roller skating videos on, on Instagram. And now she skates with Usher. Now. If y'all go to the Usher tour, if you see Usher post, she's the girl with the long braids or the long braid that's always skating with Usher. She turned her hobby into her bat, but you don't even have to do that. She started just skating because she just really enjoyed it and loved it and her gift made room for her. So if she would have just never started that and was like, oh, I can't make any money skating, so I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to spend time on my hobby. I'm not going to do the thing that I just genuinely love to do and that I'm good at. Look what it is. She skates with Usher. All the time, like all the time. <laughs> and if you grew up in the 99 and the 2000, you know how prevalent Usher is for our generation. <laughs> but I say all that to say is get some hobbies, have some fun. You never know what that will open up for you. It may bring you money, it may not, but we have to start enjoying our lives and having some work life balance to offset. Just everything that we got going on. And a lot of us are stressed because all we do is focus on the family and, the, and, the, and, and the, the jobs and the businesses, which are important. I'm not saying neglect them and just go out and be like, eh, bye, I'm gone. No, <laughs> not saying that. But carve out time, even if it's 30 minutes a week, even if it's an hour a week, something for yourself. Even if it's not like a maybe a physical, physical activity, maybe it's girls day. You know, me and my friends linked up the other on, was it Saturday or Sunday? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Can't remember what day it was. <clears throat> and we all were like, dang, we just didn't realize how much we needed and missed girl time. We needed it so much. And especially to my women out there who are mommies and wives and stuff like that. Men make time for their hobbies all the time. Men make time for their friends all the time. Make time for yourself and your friends and your and yourself. It's okay to leave that baby with a babysitter, your mama, somebody, his mama, somebody, you know, somebody you trust and go out there and, and, and live and enjoy your lives. Y'all are loading up the comments today. I got to get through these. Hey, thank you for the super chat, Percy. I really, really, really appreciate it. Percy says, good morning, Brittany. A lot of people move to the big cities, but feel like if I have a degree in this there, are making 10K more with the same degree, are there times when moving to a smaller city is better? Okay, so what Percy's asking, um, people move to bigger cities to get more money for their careers. And are there times when moving to smaller cities is better? Yes, it is. It depends on your career field and what you want. When I was in the news, everybody in New York said, if you want to make a name for yourself in this, in this uh, work field, Go to a smaller city and make a name for yourself. So if you're in news, entertainment, uh, depending on what type of entertainment outlet to get the experience, it's good to sm start in a smaller city, especially if you are in news, 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 like actual, actual anchor going to smaller cities helps. And what type of life do you want? Bigger cities doesn't always bring people peace. When I lived in New York, I had got out of there in two years. I lived in New York and I was like, uh, -uh I need some air. I need birds. I need quiet. <laughs> if the smaller city is going to give you a better peace of mind and you can work remotely, I'm not sure about as money is concerned. Um, and it just depends on the job. It depends on the company. Some companies aren't based in huge cities. Some companies are based in up and coming cities or cities that are reinventing themselves. It really just depends on you and your goals. 
but you don't have to move to a bigger city to make more money. Now that with remote, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Uh, but thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. KK says, thank you, Brittany. We can all do this every, uh, every Davis. Oh, every day <laughs> is our chance to start something new. <laughs> every, absolutely. But going back, if you guys are joining us, we are talking about your life is a reflection of your state of mind. If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you like, if you think, <laughs> if you like to win, but don't think you can, it's almost a cinch that you won't. I got that uh, quote from TK. Shout out to TK's Juicy Vlogs and TK's Juicy Polls. Um, that's who I got that from. Let's see. Going back to the comments. You guys join us over on YouTube if you want to be a part of the conversation. If not, then you guys can stay on TikTok and watch. Loss prevention. It's kind of around loss prevention. Here it is. It's risk management and forecasting. Yes, that's it. Thank you, guys. I knew, I knew y'all so smart. Y'all are so smart. I knew y'all was going to have it. But yes, if you are a person whose superpower is to see the worst case scenario, because that is a superpower, everybody doesn't see that. Everybody can't see where something can go wrong. But instead of using it in everyday life, use it in areas like loss prevention, risk management, HR, and forecasting. Because those people and law, you need those kind of brains to go out into the world and be like, where is the mistakes? Where are the holes? There, there are jobs like that. So if that is your superpower, use it to make you some money, but don't use it in your everyday life because it will, it, it won't be good. You'll constantly focus on the negative and we can't do that. But remember, if you go to the negative, stop yourself, say, okay, that's the worst case scenario. Nine times out of 10, it won't happen. What can I do? Uh, what's the best case scenario? And what can I do to make sure that that doesn't happen? Good morning. Finally made it to the morning motivation. I've been watching the replay since January and February. Thank you for joining. I appreciate that. Is it Nasia? Oh, let me know how to spell your name phonetically so I can pronounce it properly because your name is beautiful and I don't want to mess it up. So please let me know in the comments how to uh, pronounce your name. But thank you so much for, for supporting the, the pod. And don't forget you guys can stream on uh, Facebook. Spotify, Apple Music, the Brittany Daniel podcast live each and every weekday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern. Let me plug up my phone so my TikTokers don't, don't die on me. <laughs> Sorry, TikTok is what we, we working with today. <laughs> yes, absolutely found out what WFH was trying to make us come back into the office in the coming months. I left within a month. Yes, like if you notice that that the great thing about the pandemic, what we've learned is that we can work from home and we can get a lot of our time back. Because to me and what I've learned in my career field and what I truly stand by, I don't care how much time it takes you as long as it gets done. But if it takes you shorter, even better. I think we should be paid more so on efficiency versus how long something takes. Like, I think that's crazy. But yeah, if you see some certain changes or everybody needs to be back in the office by this time, go look. There are plenty of remote jobs out there, y'all. So if you want to change a career, go update your resume. I would have a, around two or three, depending on the career field that you're in. Remember, we brought on Travis a couple months ago. Travis has a resume service. If you do not have the time to write your resume. Uploaded on LinkedIn, ZipRecruiter. I get hit up on ZipRecruiter all the time and actually had a few interviews from ZipRecruiter. I uh, turned one job down and I'm waiting on one to tell me. And I'll give you guys an update on that. I'm going back to work or not. And also, if you've been in the entrepreneurship space, it's okay to go back to work and just to have a different sense. Like, there's pros and cons to being an entrepreneur versus working for your um, working for others. And sometimes depending on your personality and what type of lifestyle you want, it's not always a bad thing. Don't feel like you've, de you've defeated or you've given up because you want to change of pace or you want to change industries or um, career fields. It's okay to be like, you know what? I want to try something different. I want to challenge myself. I want something new. So never feel guilty for switching up. Do what's best for you. 
Good morning, King Amber. Yes, I'm happy you're here as well. Yes, thank you guys so much. Coming from HR, y'all better play the game. <laughs> we talk about that too. We talked about that too. Play the game. Um, Cookie Monster says, I did not hear anything about layoffs, but there was nepotism and favoritism. Okay. And that, you know what? And that's just a sign that whatever's meant for you is going to be for you. So do not worry about that. You didn't lose nothing. God is going to set you up for, for better. God is just going to set you up for better. But always y'all play the game, especially if you have a romantic relationship with your boss. Jeanette, what you talking about? You should not. We talked. We should not be. Uh, We should not be having no romantic stuff with our co-workers, bosses. Remember, we talked about that, y'all. Co-workers are not your friends. You do not. No, 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 no. No relationship drama. No relationship drama. Work drama. No. Give yourself time. Give yourself about a year. Before you start trusting folks in the workplace, um, we talked about that before. I do not trust it. Nobody at your job is your friend unless they have proven themselves to be your friend over time. But no, ma'am, no, Pam. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We don't do it. <laughs> Keep your business to yourself. Nope. Cindy says, that's a great question. In my career field, workaholic it ism was taught and encouraged. So I was trained that way. I also have been a high achiever, which didn't help. Plus the, well, you're single with no kids. Okay. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this, Sydney, because this is something that our counterparts have, 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 they did it. They tried to do it to Oprah. It does not matter what your work life or your home life, what you got going on at home is not nobody's business at the workplace. You could have five boyfriends or a husband. You could have zero kids or 20 kids. That does not matter. And that should not change your workload. Work when you're at work. When you're at home, you're at home. That was one of the best things somebody taught me when I was a young lieutenant. I asked this officer when I first started my job. I was like, what advice do you have for me? He said, keep work at work and at home at home. He said, well, do not bring your laptop home with you. There will always be work to be done at the office. And depending on your your job, your work environment and all of that. But because you're single and you don't have kids, you still got a life, girl. I got tennis practice. I got hobbies. I got golf. I have skating. I have a dinner with my, my best friends, my college roommate. No, 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 no. Also being a high achiever can be also a, I would ask if you're in therapy, I would, I would see where that comes from. Because being a high achiever and wanting that praise and recognition comes from wanting to be accepted, wanting to be, you need that, something about that praise, maybe, and I'm not, I'm not a therapist, Sydney, but, but check with that. But absolutely not. I got stuff to do. How are you supposed to date and become unsingle with some cheering if you always work in work-life balance, work-life balance. And they don't need to know. You could have just adopted somebody for all you know. Oh, you know, y'all don't have to tell these folks your business. Stop telling these folks at your job, your business. Are you married? I don't talk about my, <laughs> you can lie. It doesn't matter. Like, I just feel like you don't have to be standoffish because you still have to play the game, but they should not know all your business. You're single with no kids. So Steve, just because you decided to get married at 18 is not my problem. Living my life, they're jealous. <laughs> Charmaine says, my job is requiring us to travel to clients when it was strictly work from home. I want to quit so bad, but I have only been here a couple of months. <clears throat> I would say start looking for other jobs, you know, put out your resume. They don't need to know about this one. They can know about your other one, but you want to do your two weeks. You still want to leave with some dignity, but you can also be honest and say, hey, I was hired for a job and I was misled on what the requirements were. And that's why in interviews, it's very important when a job asks you, hey, so what questions do you have of me? Ask those things. Hey, what is your work-life balance? What, do you, what are your work hours? What do you expect from your employers? What would disappoint you? That's the time that you filter out um, office culture. That's the time that you filter out what your requirements are and what they expect of you. 
Don't just be so excited to get the job that you don't ask those certain questions that you don't ask about benefits, PTO, time off. Hey, so I had this issue at my other job. So I just wanted to see how you guys operate. Um, when it comes to PTO, it is allotted and there's no kickback from employers taking their PTO. Or how do you guys feel about that? Ask questions. You got your the job is just as much for you as you are for them. You know, we've been trained, especially in America, to like, um, if you get a job, just be grateful. Just be grateful. No. I, it's an equal exchange. It's just like any other relationship. You wouldn't have your, your man come and drain you dry. You wouldn't have your friends come and drain you dry. Do not let a job do that. Okay, y'all are giving me money, but I'm giving you my time, my knowledge, and my resources that are more precious. And clearly, if you could do it without me, you would. Okay, so y'all got to have some some gump, some, some kahuna, some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, these jobs. No, this is just a job. It is a part of your life. It is not your whole life. Remember, we talked about our lives are pizzas. Our lives are like pizzas. Every sector is a purpose. You got God, you got your hobbies, you got your man, you got your kid, you got, and I get it depending on your life. And I'm saying this to mothers lightly because I'm not a mom. So take that with a grain of salt, but things should be a part of your life, not all of your life. And I get it. Certain stages it is what it is, right? You have kids, it's a whole different ball game. But things should be a part of your life, not your entire life, because that's when we leave. I don't know who I am. I lost myself. That's when all of those things start to come into play. When we let things take over our lives instead of trying, trying the best that we can to manage. But when it comes to like jobs and relationships, child, they're a part of our lives, not all of our lives. Now, if you're a mom, that's different. So take that with a grain of salt, because I'm not a mom. Um Oh, no worries, Abrika. Always watch the replay. Yes, good for her. I love that. Absolutely. Melanin Honey says, I really needed this. I've been trying not to think about the negative things and getting myself out of debt so I can keep my home. Oh, I've been working so hard and having the can-do attitude. Yes, ha work at it. And then also, um, there are still COVID-19 incentives. Call your mortgage companies and say, hey, I'm having a little hard time right now. I'm in between jobs. Is there a program where y'all can work with me? You will be surprised. There's so many companies, car companies, they will give you up. They will give you extensions, weeks. Everybody has been there, COVID or not, but they still have COVID incentives. So see if that can help you. Um, also, it, it could be a time. But one thing that I learned from... One thing that I learned from uh, Budgetista, right? When you're trying to pay off debt, especially student loans and things like that, those can be paid last. Those can be paid last. So pay all your essentials first, your mortgage, your lights, get your food, all of those things. Your, your student loans and your debt payments can be paid last. Um, do not pay those first and then try to pay your bills with everything left over. If you don't have it, just call them and say, hey, I ain't got it this month. Worst case scenario, you're going to get some hits on your credit. You can rebuild that later. Like always try your best to pay your essentials first. And you, like I said, you can always go back and pay them later. Worst case scenario, y'all, you're going to get a couple hits on your credit. You can always go back and reverse that. It's so easy to build up your credit nowadays and so easy to get things so don't don't worry about like, oh, my gosh, if I don't pay this, my credit, my credit, my credit. If you're not trying to buy a house, if you're not trying to get a certain type of job, if you're not trying to get a certain type of car or whatever, credit is play the game. Right. Credit is used for credit purposes only. If you're not in the state where you're not about to buy another house, you're not about to get another job or get another whatever. Hey, I'm having everybody has a rough, rough patch. Everybody has been there. So don't feel like. You're the worst person ever if your credit takes a couple of dips. It'll be fine. It'll be okay. And that's the thing, too. We got to ask ourselves, okay, what's the worst case scenario? Okay, my credit gets hit. Am I going to die? No. I can fix it later. And I know that that's not sound advice, but if you're struggling between what to pay, pay your essentials and your necessities first, then pay your debt last or later or whenever. Sometimes you can defer it. Sometimes you can put it in forbearance, whatever you have to do to get yourself some breathing room in order for you to be okay mentally to keep going. Good morning, Lacey. <coughs> oh, Jesus. Sorry, y'all. All I want to know is water or fish. 
I have no idea what that means. <laughs> no idea what that means. Authenticating beauty says, Percy, the money stretches further with a city with lower cost of living. I'm still in the Midwest, but my new remote job is based in mid-Atlantic. Life is good. Okay, there you go, Percy. There goes some, uh, some tea for you. Good morning. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. Ross says, if I could go to a to Times Square every weekend, I would, I would, it's what song to say the lights will inspire you. <laughs> oh, like the song says, the lights will inspire you. I'll watch the live concert in Times Square and it works to motivate me. That's awesome. I love Times Square too. It's one of my favorite places in New York. I love Times Square. Love Times Square. I don't know if it stays open like it used to, but used to be able to go like shopping until 2 a.m. in Times Square. Love Times Square. Danette says on the Inside Edition, they were saying how people are moving out of the United States and moving to places like London and Europe and Italy to name a few. That's interesting. I would think, though, that places like London and Italy would be expensive, but I have no clue. But yeah, and this is a great time to look at other countries. There's countries in Africa people are locating to. Like one of my neighbors just sold her house and she's moving to Ghana. Oop, y'all, my little thing slipping. She's moving to Ghana or she moved to Ghana. So you just never know. You never know. Just do your research. Like don't think that this is all you have. The world is so big and there's so many people making YouTube videos about it. So if you're curious, if it's just something that crosses your mind, just do a little research. What's the worst that can happen? You don't move. You, you could at least go look and see. Sydney says, right now I'm working in a better work environment and they're super supportive. Like absolutely do not work on the weekends. When you leave the office, you're done with work. Absolutely. I always ask, hey, what's your requirements? What's your work-life balance uh, policy here at your, at your job space? That's how you know. If you ask them with their work-life balance, if they expect you to work all the time, you'll know. And you'd be like, oh no. The panorama taught me different. <laughs> Sydney says, people really try it though. I've learned a lot and I am not putting up with toxic environments and su supervisors anymore. No, 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 no. <laughs> Destiny's child voice. <laughs> um, she Amber says to Brandy, sometimes you can be misled. And I think you did with the job. You can definitely get another job without anyone uh, with this one on your resume, find similar or better ones and still give them your skills. I agree. But make sure you still leave properly two weeks notice. That way, if you ever need to use them as a reference, you can. Um, she, Brandy says, I asked all of those questions. They changed it. Everyone is upset. Oh no, it's time to look for something new because y'all playing now. Uh, uh That's just like getting into a relationship with somebody and then they tell you they got kids. What we doing? No, 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 no. Brandy, you have all the rights to go look for another job. All the rights to go look for another job. Dia Dia says, my yes, my loyalty is to me and my mental health, not these jobs. Absolutely not. You should never be loyal to a job more than you're loyal to yourself. Because at the end of the day, if you were to go, they will replace you. You will be replaced. Your job will be posted on Indeed, LinkedIn, Zoom, whatever, in the next 48 to 58 hours. Cookie Mom says, I work with at a mortgage company and romantic relationships between, uh-uh, they being messy. <laughs> okay, you're uh, attractive. I know there have been some men who have hollered at you on past jobs. Did they, did you let them down easy? No, but first of all, a lot of the people that would try to hit on me at my job, um, I was very strict on the I don't fool with my coworkers thing. That is a no, because what you're not going to do is talk about me when I ain't around and tarnish my good working name. So I was very strict on the no, absolutely not. And the nine times out of 10, if somebody did try to talk to me, they were lower enlisted. And so I would just hurt their feelings and tell them they didn't make enough and they would get out of my face. I'm flattered, but no, I'm good. No, I didn't even say I was flattered. I'd be like, ew, because... <laughs> That I would put myself in a precarious situation because I outrank them nine times out of 10. So even if I'd like, oh, that's so sweet. No, I lose at the end of the day and ain't nobody worth my coins. You ain't about to mess up my reputation. The Bible says the reputation is better than gold. Y'all can mess up y'all reputations if y'all want to. Not this one. You ain't going to get me on no sexual harassment suit 
And ladies, that can happen to you too. So you better be careful. They be trying to, they be all in your face. And then as soon as they don't get their way, sexual harassment. Nope. Men, y'all better learn too. Y'all better stop. Stop hollering at women on your job. It's so many other women out here. Stop doing that. Y'all be setting yourselves up for failure. This man went viral on either TikTok or Instagram because he would go to jobs, know that people were hooking up. People on the job would talk about it. And then he would file a sexual harassment complaint and sue the company. People are out here setting people up. What are y'all doing? No. Interview the company that's interviewing you. Absolutely. Romantic relationships between coworkers was encouraged. Oh, they trying to set y'all up for failure. Oh, no, 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 no. Y'all, that is not playing the game. Play the game. The game is a no. You don't want anybody at your job to ever have a one, one up, a leg up, a no. Don't tell your personal business. You don't make coworking friends. After, after a year, once you've assessed them, maybe. I've gotten a couple coworkers throughout my career. A couple, like one each spot, one ain't a slew. No, 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 no. They don't need to know your business. They don't need to know where you live. They don't need to, because some people will try to size you up and count your pockets, knowing where you live, what you drive, not their business. If you have to go to work, go ahead. I love you guys. Have a beautiful and blessed day. I'm going to stay on and just finish up these comments. No. Kiki says, I'm sitting at home doing my budget right now before I check the check hits my account. Absolutely, Kiki. She learned that in the 555. <laughs> um, okay, what y'all talking about? Yeah, they, they're trying to set y'all up for failure. Don't do that. <clears throat> I don't know what this person's. Uh, what is they talking about? Okay, block. <laughs> block. Yeah, they, they're being real disrespectful. Thank you for reporting the comments. All right, we got two more. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Dia Dia says, I, would, I wouldn't want to date anyone I worked with. If you break up and then they're still and you have to see them every day, that is true. I do the church. Y'all, anywhere you go on a frequent basis, you do not want to date anybody. Maybe date after when you're done, you've worked. If they really want you. Let them be, but at your job and you don't work out and then they can tell somebody if they slept with you or they could tell about your day. They could talk about you in a break. No. They try to set y'all up for failure. I don't like that job. Wouldn't encourage it. Zero out of zero recommendation. Y'all don't play yourself. Y'all play the game. Play the game. But going back to the topic. Uh, your life is a reflection of your state of mind. If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you won't. If you like, if you if you would like to win, but don't think you can, it is almost a cinch that you won't. Okay. Have a beautiful and blessed day, you guys. I will see you guys tomorrow. Happy Friday for those of you who I will see. I won't see tomorrow, but we will be here bright and early, 8 a.m. Eastern. On morning motivation do not forget to give this video a thumbs up do not forget to subscribe do not forget to share these videos and these live streams with anybody who may want to watch or just they need to hear some some encouraging words i love you guys have a beautiful blessed day i'll see you tomorrow bye y'all